Hello, my name is John Patrick Morgan and I'd like to share with you how to take a stand. How to stand, how to stand for something. The subtlety in this is knowing what it is to stand and the way we can know what it is to stand is to know what it is to not stand. So the first and most obvious not standing is running away from something. It's pretty obvious. Giving in, acquiescing, giving up. You might even call it accepting, sometimes like a feigned wisdom of the heart, but really I'm just giving up, I'm calling it accepting. It's, 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 it's expressing a desire, and then as soon as somebody says no, I'm like, oh, see, I tried, I tried, you know? Did my, did my best. It's like, nah, come on, dude. You, you asked once, you're giving up. It's giving in, that's, 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 that's the flight response. You know, there's this fear going on, there's discomfort, and you're walking away. Don't do that. Or you might be actually in a situation where you want to express a desire, but you're frozen, you don't even take, the, take action to ask in the first place. That would be the freeze response, a close cousin of the flight response. But in both those cases, it's kind of the most obvious means of, you know, not standing for something. The other way that a person does not stand for something, much less obvious, much more confusing, I think, for people, because a lot of times people think they're standing for something, but they're doing this, which is not standing. Um, they're fighting, fighting for it. To fight for something is not to stand for something. The most striking image of this is a scene in the film Gandhi, where Gandhi's followers, his people, are standing in front of British soldiers and the British soldiers confront them and they start hitting them with sticks and Gandhi's peeps they just stand there they don't run away they don't move they don't even fight back they don't even try to block themselves they literally stand there while they're beaten with the sticks and it's like there's a, there's a nuance in that, there's a subtlety in that, that's when you watch it, the mind, the heart gets it. The brain, the conscious, like, what the, what's going on here? What is this? We can't even really compute what a person's doing when they're doing that. But on the deepest level, you're like, wow, that is so powerful. The people that are being beaten without cowering or running away, we experience them as stronger than the people who are beating them with sticks. Why is that? It's because we see deeply inside these people there's a will there's a spirit there's a choice there's a commitment to an idea to an ideal that's more powerful than the experience of pain being hitting by these sticks that is as a human being we know as an even greater strength than some brute strength some physical force and of course knowing history if you know anything about history uh, Gandhi changed the world through inspiring people to act in a nonviolent way. You know, like he shifted circumstances politically in India because what happened is after a while of people standing for an idea, not running away, not freezing and doing nothing, but standing up for an idea and not fighting when they were hit with violence. They're not fighting, they're not flighting, they're not freezing. What's left? Only love only a new possibility stood for with strength and eventually you know Gandhi says that patience weans the enemy from their error and so patience actually means to suffer so your willingness to suffer the erroneous attack and violence of the enemy eventually the enemy comes to see their own uselessness their own vulgarity their own violence and they stop, and they rise to a higher vibration, if you want to go California, to a more loving way of being. They come around to their senses, if we want to say it straight. This isn't working, this is kind of horrible. This, their, their humanness comes alive. And on a smaller, micro, less violent version, this, the same thing plays out in daily life and in relationships. People oscillate, but I see it all the time, between flight and fight. I either have to acquiesce, give in, tail between my legs, whimper, walk away, avoid the question, freeze, or 
They try to fight for it, passive aggressive or straight up aggressive, try to take it, try to argue, try to prove their point, try to get what they want from somebody. It's like both suck, both down here. Fight, flight, freeze, just the bottom of this pyramid. We're at the transcendent point at the top is standing. It's none of those things. So how do you stand for something? You first find out, well, what am I doing that's not standing? Am I freezing up, analysis, paralysis, holding back from even taking action? Or am I taking that action and then backing away, giving in, tail between my legs, giving up for its flight? Or am I trying to get it through, trying to force somebody into it, like make them see it, blaming them for not giving it to me, getting aggressive, or even just cleverly manipulative? You know, what can I do to get them? If It's the texture of it, too. How do you know if you're fighting? The other two are obvious. How do you know if you're fighting? It's what your heart feels like. Is there frustration? Is there anxiousness? Is there fear? Is there worry? Is there like this fuck, come on-ness in you? So how do you stand? You have to not be afraid, right? And how do you not be afraid? You have to have a connection to what you would love while at the same time knowing that you don't need it in order to be safe, in order to be okay. It's okay if you beat me with a stick, it doesn't hurt me because I'm choosing that I'm not hurtable. You could say, I'm not, you can't fuck with me, basically. I'm not fuck withable, I'm unfuck withable. Because if you fuck with me, then that means that you've moved my emotional body in such a way where I can't not react now, either through whimpering, cowering, freezing, or fighting you. If somebody gets you to argue, they fucked with you. If somebody gets you to run away, they fucked with you. If somebody gets you to freeze, they fucked with you. So to be unfuckwithable is to not let that stuff matter. It's not, it's okay. Whatever's happening is okay. I'm okay with it. And at the same time, I stand for what I love. I'm okay with not having it, and I stand for what I love. I'm okay with not having it, and I stand with what I, for what I love. Those are not contradictions. They can exist simultaneously. And that's really the dance, when you can simultaneously live in, it's okay that I don't have what I want and I stand for having it. I am desire and I do not need what I desire. I want what I want and I don't need what I want. That's it. So how to stand for something, how to stand for what you want. Don't fight, don't flight, don't freeze. Don't be fuck with the bull, don't be fuck with the bull by not letting anything that's happening matter more than you just standing for what you want. It's okay. It's okay that it's not happening and I'm going to stand here until it does. Thank you so much for listening. If you like my support in creating everything that you want in your life, and I don't mean that... Um, how do I mean that? Well, what I mean is I do mean that literally. I don't mean that not literally. I mean that literally, if you would like my help in creating everything you want in your life, then send me an email and let's talk. Um, tell me everything you want and I'll tell you how I can help you create it. I love you for being here. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you soon.